Good evening. Our top story this week. U.S. Senators are saying that a federal action may be needed to curb the process of rehoming where adoptive kids are being bought and sold online without government interference. After a hearing is held where child advocates ask Congress to do more to protect adopted children. In Massachusetts, the child protective industry hires 230 new and inexperienced CPS agents, but their caseloads still remain high. And the chief of the social workers union says that morale remains low. In Alaska, they're taking too many kids, which is making it hard to help those who actually need it. And in Missouri, Governor Jay Nixon signs off on a bill that gives CPS agents additional time to screw with families who they are investigating. In Arizona, the child protective industry is set to heighten its oversight of psychiatric medications for foster children. In Arkansas, payments to the state's foster parents is going to be delayed because of a change in how the child protective industry makes its payments. In Virginia, it is revealed that they're not investigating every call to the child abuse hotline, and because of pressure on the White House to start sending them back, kids who are crossing the border illegally are facing a loss of legal protection, according to human rights groups. In Finland, two CPS agents are criticizing their managers for not allowing enough resources which are legally bound for child protection work and which led to the death of an eight-year-old child. And in Taiwan, the study proves that social workers have mental issues from excessive caseloads and constantly dealing with other people's bullshit. In Canada, DC Comics refuses to let a family use the Superman logo on a memorial for a five-year-old boy who starved to death in a CPS chosen kinship placement. And in British Columbia, the child protective industry is using a poorly constructed and outdated computer system for their child welfare system, which is prone to crashes and causing confusion and backlogs. In Australia, three kids who went on a violent crime spree over the weekend will stay in custody until their child protective industry can figure out what to do with them. And the indigenous peoples of Australia are now being forced to fight the government just to be able Able to keep their children. In England, a full investigation is set to begin regarding a cover-up of allegations of child abuse by British government officials and celebrities in the 1980s, which is getting people all worked up in Westminster. In California, testimony begins in the trial of a foster father who killed a three-and-a-half-month-old baby. In Florida, a foster mother got arrested for leaving a 15-month-old boy alone in a hot car. In Georgia, a foster mother was arrested for abusing her foster kids after a video surfaces of her stuffing a kid's head into a toilet. And in Michigan, a foster mother takes a plea deal for involuntary manslaughter and the choking death of a two-year-old that would allow her to avoid any jail time. In New Mexico, a 17-year-old girl gets 10 years for killing her foster mother back in 2011. In Hawaii, a woman was stabbed to death by her 16-year-old foster son. In Maryland, a 10-year-old disabled foster child dies at a group home. And in South Carolina, the child protective industry is being accused of keeping two siblings together in foster care, even though they knew that one was sexually abusing the other. In Connecticut, the child protective industry is ordered to rehire a youth officer from a juvenile detention facility who was fired for criticizing the agency's racist attitude towards teenagers. In North Carolina, the child protective industry fires two more workers and demotes a top manager after a foster kid was found handcuffed with dead chicken around his neck. In Tennessee, a child custody case where two wannabe adoptive parents are fighting for custody of a real father's daughter is back in court over motions to dismiss each other claims. And in Pennsylvania, CPS agents snatched a healthy baby because it was born at home. In Texas, two siblings who were in foster care drowned in a lake. And the state decides to stop sending kids to the agency who oversaw the drowning. In Washington, a foster child adoption is halted due to the kids' tribal ties. In Vermont, prosecutors decide not to charge a CPS agent who didn't protect a 15-month-old boy who died. And finally tonight, in Michigan, a judge upholds a lower court's decision to dismiss charges against a mother who was accused of shooting at police who were aiding and abetting CPS agents in the legal kidnapping and forced drugging of her daughter. For these stories and all the latest heard on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.